Uh, hi there, YouTube community. This is Barco Nine Five Eight checking in again with another installment of the Myers Briggs Personality uh, Inventory Type series. Usually, I do try to reserve viewer questions for again the viewer question playlist, just because if people aren't really interested, they can just skip right to the parts that they are interested in. But I I just decided right before I get into the judging and perceiving functions in in the next video, I wanted to slip this sort of anecdotal. Um, video right in here just because it's something that I I have a lot of personal misgivings about. Um, so today I'm just going to cover again flaws and criticisms in the Myers break. Um, what really what are some what are some sort of um, maybe gaps in uh, things like statistical validity um, in terms of the Myers break as a, as a as an example of psychometrics that is used very widely. Um, so Normally, again, and again, normally I do try to pitch my videos at more of a maybe an entertainment value. Um, if, you, if you've noticed, I tend to you know use a lot of visuals. I tend to try to crack jokes. I try to try to use humor to make to make learning fun. Um, but um, certainly, this video is going to be a little different. This video today is going to be pitched a little bit more academic, simply because this is a topic that I cannot simplify it. I mean, I I am an adamant disciple of science, yes, but I am also an adamant believer that um, science is meant to educate people, and if it's not accessible, then there's no point, and I will stick to that. But in terms of what is wrong with the Myers-Briggs, in terms of some things like the structure of the psychometric itself, um, there's no way I can really simplify this, simplify this while sort of still retaining, first of all, scientific integrity, second of all, really, really, you know, giving, you know, paying justice to, to all the hard work and all the research that has gone into personality psychology. Um, so again, this is going to be a pitched a little bit more academic maybe than you're used to. Um, today, I'm not aiming to entertain, I am, I am aiming to inform. Um, so if you're one of those people that are just kind of interested, you know, you want to know what type you are, what the different kind of types are all about, then you might want to skip this video. But um, And I do recommend this option. If you're more interested in, say, some of the scientific basis or lack of it behind the myers break, then I recommend you watch this video. Um, so first, the first major flaw that I can think of is this idea of the myers break has certainly very questionable uh, validity. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, First of all, sort of one of the biggest criticisms in terms of a lack of scientific validity for the Myers-Briggs, there have been no attempts yet as to date to, um, to perform something called a double-blind test. Um, and, this, and, and a double-blind test is a test that is very, very, very important specifically for psychometrics um, and particularly for something, for, for the fact that the Myers-Briggs is something called an, called an um, SR psychometric, so a self-reporting psych psychometric. I will get into that later, but this is a very um, important point to remember. Um, so what is a double-blind test? Okay, um, A double-blind test is basically a test or an experiment in which both the experimenter and, and, the, uh, and the subject don't know um, don't know what exactly the right, quote unquote, right answer is. Um, so one example of this uh, would be, say, horoscopes, right? So you flip open your newspaper and, you know, you, you say, oh, I'm a Virgo. And in the horoscope it says, oh, Virgos are, you know, supposed to like lists. Virgos are supposed to be organized. You know, Virgos are supposed to be analytical. And um, you read that and uh, you would say, oh, yeah, that's me. Oh, yeah, that's me. Similarly, this effect happens when, let's say that, you know, you take some really crappy online MBTI test and it says that you're an ENTP. Um, and you Google ENTP and you read the descriptions and you're nodding to yourself. You're saying, oh, yeah, this is definitely me. You know, this, this, this is totally what I do. Wow, you know, this is a really valid system. But um, one of the major criticisms, and I do tend to agree certainly with this, um, is because there are no double-blind tests, you, uh, the Myers-Briggs, your type is subject to something called the Fourier effect. Um, this is, again, also known as the horoscope effect. So that's, that's the tendency for people when they read something that they think is right to make it, um, to, they will change their cognition to make it fit. Something that I would like to see done, I'm not sure if it will be, is to perform this double-blind test on the Myers-Briggs. So what that would entail is, let's say that this person um, tested as an INTJ, okay? Um, tested as an INTJ, but you show him or her, say, a profile for an, you know, ENFJ, and see what they agree. I mean, do they agree? You know, do they disagree? Chances are, and what the Fourier effect predicts is that regardless of the fact that they really are an INTJ, when they read the ENFJ profile, they will they think it's right, and so they will make it fit. 
this is certainly one of the major pitfalls in regards to um, um, researchers um, conducting their own experiments because particularly with personality psychology because personality is something that is so fluid that is such a value judgment in many cases so that's sort of the t distinction between what sh what is and what you want to be um, so that would be the first major criticism of the Myers-Briggs is this idea of a lack of um, um, scientific validity um, the second major criticism of the Myers-Briggs is um, the fact that uh, very, very often, personality fails to predict behavior, and um, this is this is a very well-known concept in social psychology. Um, unless external or situational or contextual uh, forces are extremely weak, personality traits and attitudes are actually very poor at predicting um, how you will behave in a certain situation. And again, this kind of just—I mean, this is a sort of a slap in the face in regards to the Myers Briggs. I mean, isn't it? Um, you know, people people pick a type, you know, and they expect that this type will predict how they behave, okay? And even then, um, your personality does not measure, um, well, your personality does not predict your behavior in a specific situation. It, it predicts your your um, tendency to act a certain way given, um, you know, sort of like a long-run average or expected value of many different situations, right? Um, and the problem with that is that when people, you know, they see a description, they will immediately conjure up vivid sort of um, events that confirm this belief. So let's say you're an INTJ and you Google INTJ and you look at the profile, okay? So first of all, because of the Fourier effect, as I mentioned in the first part, um, you will tend to make it fit. Okay. Second of all, because attitudes are so bad at predicting behavior um, in specific instances, you will conjure up vivid um, events um, in your head to justify this. Um, so one example would be, okay, let's say that uh, let's say that ITJs uh, tend to uh, I don't know tend to like eating chocolate under a full moon on Friday the 13th. Um, just a very arbitrary example, right? Um, you will you see that and you will eventually conjure up a, a, a time that you can remember in which you did that exact same thing or something similar to that. That does not necessarily mean that you like eating chocolate all the time. It doesn't mean that you like eating chocolate under the moon all the time or, or on Friday the 13th at the time because that is a very specific one time or very specific occurrence. But what personality does not predict is specific occurrence. What personality predicts is long run average of what you tend to do. Um, the third one is probably the most pressing, the most talked about, the most criticized flaw of the Myers-Briggs is the idea that the Myers-Briggs is something called an um, an SR inventory, so a self-reporting inventor inventory. What does that mean? It is um, well, it, it's as the name implies, um, it's something that you score yourself. Okay, so even if you go to a licensed psychologist, you know they sit you down with a paper and pen and um, they say go nuts, right? And um, well, what are what are some of the problems with self self reporting scales, right? Um, certainly, uh, one of the major things is that is this idea of socially desirable responding, and uh, the uh, the the tendency for people to self enhance towards towards their idealized self. Okay, so let's break that idea down for a minute. Okay, let's say let's say that you had prior knowledge of the Myers Briggs. Let's say that um, you look through all the personality profiles and you thought that ENTJ fit, uh, fit you the best. Okay, so keep that in mind. You think that ENTJ fit you the best. And um, you also happen to like um, the profile of ENTJ the best. So when you go on, let's say you know you sit down with your psychologist or whatever and they give you the Myers Briggs uh, questionnaire and you fill it out um, the, idea, the idea of first of all self -enhance, enhancement towards your idealized self you want to be an ENTJ. Um, you know maybe a little bit about what what an ENTJ, ENTJ might answer on specific questions on the questionnaire, and so you will be more inclined to answer as you want to be rather than as you are. Um, and the second, again, this kind of links into socially desirable responding, right? I mean, obviously, when you fill out a personality questionnaire, you are expecting to be evaluated, right? Because you can't know your type until you give it to, the, to your psychologist who's administering the, the, the personality inventory. And you know they will read it. You know they may judge. I mean, it's human nature to judge. You know they'll read it. Um, so you may engage in something called socially desirable responding. So again, um, under normal circumstances, if you didn't have to hand this questionnaire in, if someone asked you, have you ever stolen a car? Have you ever cheated on a test? You, ha you have cheated on a test. But the fact that you know that someone's going to be reading this test, uh, this questionnaire, may cause you to check no. And that's, again, socially desirable responding. And the, though that's one of the major, major flaws in any self-reporting scale. Um, 
And certainly, many attempts have been made to create scales um, in regards to personality types that try to bypass um, self-reporting scale.、Um, the most